Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel if you are new. Hello, my name is V. I post note tutorials every Thursday and Sunday at 8.15 a.m. Central Time. Getting right into today's video, I am starting off by filing the sides of my practice hand. I have pre-prepped her by applying the C-Curve Extra Long Tips from Not Polish. These are full sculpted and they are pre-shaped in the perfect square shape in my opinion. I went ahead and applied them with some Young Nails brush on glue. Now I am just gently fouling the sides to make sure that the shape is super crisp to my liking with my Tammy Taylor peel and stick file. And then right after I file the sides, I go ahead and file the tip as I did cut them slightly. And they are never perfect whenever I trim them, so I'm making sure that I'm squaring them off so that the shape is nice and crisp. For today's video, it is going to be a quite fast one. I am going to be doing a nude base. For the nude base, I am using Nude Me from Not Polish. It is a really pretty nude, very, very versatile when it comes to applying it on different skin tones. I absolutely love it with all skin tones that I've used it on. It goes very well. It's a very neutral nude. And I love when I can find a universal color that goes well with everyone. So I'm applying my first bead of acrylic. I wanted to not fast forward this portion for you guys. So you guys can really see how I do my application. It can seem a little bit slow, but I like to perfect my stuff from the get-go. That way I don't have to overly file at the end. So I go ahead and apply my bead and then I'm going to be focusing on the sides to make sure that the shape stays nice and crisp. And I'm making sure that the thickness at the tip is to my liking or to my client's liking. Now I'm going to be taking another bead of acrylic. They are, I would say, medium sized beads. So if you have watched my liquid to powder ratio video, you will know exactly the size that I'm talking about. If you haven't, make sure to check that out because I do mention it a lot in my videos. And that kind of does help you guys get a nice perspective on exactly what I'm talking about. So for today's video, I'm using the Not Polish Acrylic Monomer. Along with that, I'm using their acrylic brush as well in a size 12. That also makes a huge difference when it comes to the sides of your bead as well. But for the most part, you can get a cohesive sized bead every time as long as you are doing your application the exact same way. Or I guess I should say as long as you are picking up your bead the exact same way every time. So again, I'm really focusing on my application, making sure that everything is super smooth. And as you can see, once I get done, I'm not going to have to do too much filing. So that's what I like to focus on with my application. Again, a medium sized bead of acrylic. I'm putting it near where the middle of the nail is, basically where the tip meets the natural nail. Wherever I glue that, I go a little bit above and I start my application there. And then I gently work my way down towards the tip. If it is slightly thicker towards the tip, I like to flip my brush around and kind of pull the product back up and then flatten it out and continue to work with the acrylic that way. So I'm going to be cleaning up the sides consistently, making sure again that the tip is the thickness that I want, making sure that everything is nice and even just with very light patting motion. You do not have to move this product around a lot. I feel like a lot of the time nail techs will overthink it and I'm here to tell you, you do not need to do that, especially when you're working with really good products. Not Polish does a very good job of having that buttery consistency with their acrylic and their monomer. So highly recommend them if you guys are struggling with your application. It makes a huge difference, trust me, because I've worked with really bad products and really good ones and you want to focus on getting the good products to make your life a little bit easier. Now I'm going in with my third bead right at the cuticle area. Always remember to hold the finger in a downward position. I'm gently pushing it up into the cuticle area while holding it down so that the product still flows down even though I'm pushing it up. 
and then you'll get that nice flush finish at the cuticle area with little to no work and then I'm just blending it down towards the rest of the acrylic now of course if you are working on a client make sure you build up the apex I have a in-depth video on that specifically so make sure you guys check that out for the purpose of this video on this tutorial I am not building up the apex whatsoever because it's not necessary it's a practice hand and I wanted to focus more on the base application versus fully going into it so i'm going in again medium sized bead right where the tip meets the natural nail blending it down gently you can see very very light pressure on my part little to no effort just working it the way that the product is flowing and then i'm gonna finish it off with another bead in the cuticle area again holding it downwards and then gently blending everything down and then i just do a little bit of cleaning up making sure everything is nice and flush and then of course you can always add smaller beads wherever you feel it is necessary i'm gonna go ahead and let you guys watch the rest of this and then i'll get right back on when we start filing Once we're done with the application, everything is nice and dry. A good indicator on whether your acrylic is dry or not, if you struggle with figuring it out, always give it a nice little tap with your nails. It should hear like that. Or you can always get the back of your hand file if you use the same files that I use. Anything really like a brush, you can just tap it. And if it makes a clicking noise, that is a good indicator that you are good to go and you can start filing. So for my filing process, very minimal as... I mentioned before I try to focus on my application I'm using my Kiara Sky rechargeable e-file for this step along with their 5-in-1 carbide bit this one is the rose gold medium grit one I absolutely love it it is my favorite one for finished filing I'm going in gently around the cuticle area making sure that that acrylic is nice and flush and then I'm taking the thicker part of the bit and gently filing the surface of the nail vertically up and down the reason why i do it vertically up and down is my personal preference but i feel like you get better grip of your e-file it is more likely that you will have it nice and stable versus if i try to go horizontally chances are i'm probably going to get off of the nail it's gonna skip it's gonna scare your client you're gonna get terrified so i'd rather just be safe and file vertically up and down plus i feel like it goes a lot faster if you do it that way once I'm done using my e-file, I'm going in with my Tammy Taylor peel and stick file and I'm just gently filing the sides. We have already pre-shaped the nails. As long as you don't overly apply your acrylic, you should be good to go. However, I still recommend that you file at this point because no matter how perfect you apply your acrylic, it's still going to give you little imperfections and you want to make sure that everything is super straight, super perfect. 
and you definitely do want, not want your client to point any imperfections out. So always, always cover your behind and file at the end. Again, this is just my Tommy Taylor peel and stick file and I'm having it vertically up and down, filing it and making sure that I'm grasping the finger very firmly so that it does not wiggle all over the place because it can become uncomfortable and you want your client to be comfortable at all times. Now I'm going to be flipping the hand around to look at the nails from the client's perspective. This is one of the things that I mention in every single one of my videos. It is definitely super important and then it is a shape game changer in my opinion. So this is going to help you get the perfect shape when it comes to square or coffin or anything really that you want like perfectly centered because you get to look at the nails from how the client's going to look at them. If you only file from your angle, chances are that something might be slightly off and the client will not be happy. So I'm going in now with my sponge buffer from Profiles Backstage and I am going to vigorously buff that nail. This is going to help make everything super, super smooth for our nail art. And I feel like you want it to be super smooth so that you do not have any issues when applying any nail art, any gel polish or anything like that. And this sponge buffer is perfect for that. So I'm going in, like I said, pretty harsh on the pressure. I even moved that nail. But I want to make sure that everything is super smooth. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that off. Then we're going to clean the nail off and prep for our nail art. I guess it's for the best, you know, the worst. I'm taking a lint-free wipe and some swipe from Young Nails and I'm going to thoroughly clean the surface of the nail along with my practice hand. Of course, if you're working on an actual human, you're not going to have that much dust on the skin, so you don't have to worry about that. But if you're practicing on a practice hand, you want to make sure everything is super clean so that nothing transfers onto the nail when you're doing nail art. You don't want any type of texture on it at all whatsoever. Now, I am using this fish net for the nail art. I figured I would share with you guys this little hack that I kind of figured out. Along with that, I'm using the Poochie's gel paint in the color white. So what I'm doing with this fishnet is I'm going to cut a little piece, obviously, off of the bigger portion that you purchase. And then I'm just going to scrumple it up kind of like in a little ball so that it's easier for me to hold. And then we're going to be dipping that into the paint. I'm not going to lie. I slightly stole this from that makeup trend that's going around. I'll insert photos if I can find them. But it's basically where they were taking a tissue paper, kind of bunching it up the way that I did with the fishnet, and then dipping it into their eyeshadow and then just pressing it onto their eyelid. And it looked so pretty and I was like, that gives like the perfect watercolor effect. I wonder if I can recreate that on nails. And I've done paint splatter nails before. You've all seen it. You guys have probably seen like blood splatter nails as well. But they're way too complicated. I feel like you do not want to blow into a straw and like have slobber everywhere. <laughs> And this is super quick. You can see me finishing up the design very, very quickly. So I highly recommend this method if you guys are struggling with any type of splatter nail art. This is the way to go. I'm sure you can find other things to use instead of the fishnet if you don't have it. However, it is what I had and I figured it would be the perfect texture. If you have a sponge that's very airy as well, that might work. But like I said, this is what I had on hand and I figured I would use what I have. So once that's all applied to my liking, I went ahead and placed it in the light for a full minute. You want to make sure you cure it before you add your pigments. Make sure you cure until it is nice and dry so that you can apply them perfectly. So the reason why I'm using the Poochie's gel paint is because hers has a tacky layer and you want that tacky layer so that the pigment 
adheres to it properly. If you use one with zero tacky layer, chances are it's going to wipe right off. So make sure you guys make a little bit of an investment and purchase everything that you need. It's going to last you a long time. You're going to be able to use it for endless amounts of nail art designs. So make sure you guys check her stuff out. Don't forget to use my discount code on any products that I mention. You guys can save some money. So I'm just doing a rainbow look. I figured I would go with the Pride Month still. And we're doing blue, green, yellow, orange, pink, purple. And then I think I did green and blue on the pinky again. I kind of ran out of ideas. If I was doing the thumb, I would have used that to my advantage as well. But because I'm just showing you guys four fingers, I kind of struggled to figure out what colors I was going to do. <laughs> so use your imagination when it comes to this. You can do all types of stuff with it. I love using raw pigments for this type of design and the colors are so, so vibrant. So definitely recommend. These are from Profiles Backstage and then I just purchased some little makeup sponge applicator thingies off amazon i believe so make sure you guys check the links down below for all of the products used in today's video so i'm going to be top coating these nails and i am just first going to dust off any excess pigment and i have a designated like dust brush for my pigments because they do get stained and it's really hard to clean them so I make sure I keep just one brush for that specifically and I can get it as dirty as I want and it's fine. It'll be fine. Now I did want to take a moment before we finish this video and say thank you so much to all of you guys for the love and support. We finally reached 300,000 subscribers which is mind blowing to me. I feel like our journey on YouTube just started and it has grown so much tremendously in the last year and I'm so grateful for you guys. Thank you guys for all the love. It definitely keeps me going. You guys motivate me to continue to create designs and videos for you guys. So just know that I am highly appreciative of all the love and support you guys have shown me on YouTube, on Instagram, on my personal page and my personal vlog channel. So Thank you guys so much. I definitely appreciate every single one of you guys. So I'm going in with my top coat. This is Gloss It from Not Polish. The reason why I'm using Gloss It first is because the pigment will transfer when it comes to matte. So make sure you top coat shiny, then add your matte it and you're good to go. That basically concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys next time.